Good evening. Hope you're all doing well. Today we're learning Maseches Nedarim Daf Nun Dalib. And we're going to be continuing our discussions about making a nether in one area and its applicability in other areas. Um, and that brings us uh, to a new parak as well. It's parak Hanoder Min Hayerik, a person who's going to restrict themselves with a nether from vegetables. Let's continue. The Mishnah says, Hanoder Min Hayerik Moter Bidluin, a person who makes a nether that they're not going to eat any vegetables. They're allowed to eat duluin, which is gourds, pumpkins, those kinds of things. And in fact, uh, the duluin is a pre. It's actually a fruit. Pumpkins are fruits, apparently. I don't know what we would say in the botany world, but certainly in halacha, they are treated as a fruit. Rabbi Akiva Ose, Rabbi Akiva, in fact, includes, strangely, duluin in the category of yerek. We'll ask on Rabbi Akiva in the Gemara. Amr Lola, Rabbi Akiva, I don't understand what you're talking about. hello, Omer Adam Lishlucho Kachli Yerek. If I, I, I say to my slave, I send him to the market and say, go buy me vegetables. Uhu Omer, and he responds, Lo matzasi ela duluin. I couldn't find what you asked for. All I could find was pumpkins. So says the Gemara, Amar Lahem, Rabbi Akiva says, you just proved my point. You were trying to show me that duluim are not the same exact thing as Yerek. What does Rabbi Akiva say back? Kena dabar. O Shema o Omer hu lo matzasi ala kidneys. When you send someone to the store and they can't find the vegetables, so they're going to look for the next closest replacement. So if, you, if the next closest replacement is Duluim, by virtue of the fact that you were looking for the Duluim when you couldn't find the Arakos, Rabbi Kiva says they're therefore in one genre. They're, all, they're all obviously one in the same. This is the machlok. You look upset it's, already. It's, yeah, it's the exact opposite of the most famous case of the If I send you to the shop to bring some meat, you might bring the chicken. But that's bring today. Meat. That's the Amad Bain. bring the fish. That's today. All of that, that's this whole sugya is the machlok. Yeah, I didn't even know about it. It's the machlok in the Tanakama. That's why chicken is a Or any. It means Rabban. Right, exactly. Right. Only according to some Tanai. Right. Not with this concern. The Shechting's theory, right? The Shechting? Oh, of course. Yeah, to eat. Yeah. That's a the dinner of a trefa. That's a different day altogether. We were in the car today. I went to the Bears game. What? <laughs> and uh, we were in the car today, and we were discussing the following halachic Shiloh. One of my kids, one of the kids in the car, not one of my kids, one of the kids in the car said, uh, what's the halachic status of eating a hamburger at, at Burger King? I said, it's mamish treif daraisa, so it's treif. And then somebody said, is it fleshik? And I said, no, treif meat is not fleshik. Treif meat is nothing. It's just, I mean, it's Nisar Daresa, but it's not flesh. This is like a trick Shiloh. They ask people like uh, going into some rabbinical programs. Not you eat a non, it's not Basar B'chalo, because it has to be Basar from a halachic perspective. And that's not Basar. It's a Trefa, it's a Nevela, it's it's a whole host of things, but it's not flesh. Lamai Naf, what? Probably not. It's an animal that's not shechted properly. Yeah, it's a Nevela. Correct. And the Maisa, we paskin that it's not Basar B'chalav. You only violate the Isra of eating Basar B'chalav Trevalo Sochidah. That you're not allowed to do. So the Maina Afkamin in regards to the fleshic status, if you violate the Isra, can you have milk afterwards? That'd be the Afkamin. So I'm Yosef and I, my brother-in-law, were talking in the car. He knows a lot more Torah than I do. Oh, and uh, Sidley Seeds, 50-yard line. Ooh. And it was, it, was about, it was about 10 degrees outside. Don't worry, they had indoor seats too. No, these were that's the wrong side of the field. Yeah. Okay. Anyways, this is the Machlokas Tanakam Rabbi Akiva. If somebody says, I couldn't find the vegetables, all I could find was Diluin, all I could find was the gourds, does that make them different categories or the same? And Rabbi Akiva's argument is he doesn't go into the store and say, uh, sweetheart, I was looking for vegetables, all I found were peanuts. That's not normal because it's way off the reservation. So that's the machlokas between them. Ella, it must be, says Rabbi Akiva, Shadlun bechlal yerek, the kidneys ain't a bechlal yerek. It must be that when you come home with the next closest item, with that next closest item, if you brought it home in your head, they're the same, they're the same category. Mashain can, if you go to buy vegetables and you make another on vegetables, that doesn't apply to kidneys, it doesn't apply to legumes. The Asr B'Pul HaMitzri, if a person makes a nether from a Yerak, they're not allowed to eat a Pul HaMitzri Lach. They're not allowed to eat this Pul HaMitzri, a particular type of bean when it's moist, but if it's dried out, then you're allowed to eat it. All right, let's dig in. Hanoder mean HaYerak? The Gemara says, how can Rabbi Akiva say that Duluim are part of the family of Yerak as it relates to a nether against Yerak? After all, the Hamin Yerak Nodar. 
we're, we're not discussing the overarching status of Deluim. That's for sure a pre. It's for sure not a Yerek. Even if it's the next closest thing in the store, you come home, your wife says, I asked you to get some uh, uh, some uh, sweet potatoes. And you come home with pumpkin. Okay, they're, they're not identical, but one's a fruit. Rabbi Akiva, how can you say that Deluim are part of, a, of the category of Yerek? Everyone agrees it's a pre. So says the Gemara, Omar Ula, on behalf of Rebbe Akiva, really the case in our Mishnah is missing some words. But Omer, instead of just saying, Hanoder min hayerek, here's the actual language. Yarke kedera alai. The vegetables that go inside a pot are upon me. A broader language. And really it doesn't only mean yerek. It means any foods that have to go into a pot. If you take squash raw and you don't boil it to the point that it gets soft, it's completely inedible. You can barely bite into it. It's a very, very hard vegetable or fruit. I got to keep my language straighter. So the Gemara says it must be that he was talking about Yarke Kedera Alai. Asks the Gemara, the Dilma Yerakanecha Maybe the language in our Mishnah wasn't that way. Maybe the language in our Mishnah was any fruits that you would flavor a pot with. Uh, we take garlic, we put in a little bit of minced garlic here and there, we take onions. Uh, and we put some onions in, those all, those also add flavor. So therefore, the Gemara says, you're right, good point. Really, what was the language of the Neder in our Mishnah? A third of the way down, but Omer, Yerak HaMisbashil B'Kdeira Alay. Very specific language. And this is why Rabbi Akiva was able to say that Duluim were Bechlal Yerak. Not because from a botanist's perspective that fruits and vegetables are the same. A Duluim are definitely different than a Yerak. But because the way we cook a Duluim is the same way that we cook Yerak, therefore they're one and the same. And the Gemara now articulates the machlokas between the Tanakama and Rabbi Akiva. But my kamiflage, Rabbanon savre kol milsa the tzarech shlicha le'amluche ala lab minehu. Any time the servant who you sent to jewel has to ask you if this replacement is reasonable, then by definition they're not the same min. So what's going to? I send someone to jewel. I say, please go get me sweet potatoes. So Lemaisa, they're going to text me and they're going to say, okay, but they don't, we have this with Target, right? We use their Target uh, shopping thing. And one of the options is text me for a substitute. If they text me for a substitute, in their mind, those two things can't be the same. That's the Rabbanon. These things are not the same thing. Because they have to ask, therefore we know they're not the same thing. Rabbi Akiva, Savar, no. Kol milsa de mimla shlicha Allah, minehu. By virtue of the fact that he even considered that item as a replacement, it's therefore one and the same. And then the nether would be broader and would apply both to the, to the original item and to the replacement item. Machlokes, Tanakama, and Rabbi Akiva. <laughs> the Gemara does, however, touch within Rabbi Akiva that even Rabbi Akiva doesn't think that the comparison of the original item and the replacement item is perfect. It's not a perfect comparison. What do we know? Omar Abaye, Mo de Rabbi Akiva lenyin malko she'eno loke. Rabbi Akiva agrees that if I make a neder on a yerek and I eat duluim, no malkos. Because Lemai said they're not the same thing. Yes, we treat them as equivalent in certain aspects, true. But really, fundamentally, they're not exactly the same. The harai that there's no malkos. So we would infer from here that Rabbi Akiva's comparison to uh, from a yerek to duluim is only midrabanan. That's at least what it seems on the face of the Gemara. That's what it seems like. Okay. Then the Gemara says, hang on one second. Tanan, we have a Mishnah. Tanan Hassan, we've seen this Mishnah before. If I send a Shliach to do my bidding and he does something that ends up being Me'ila, so because he's an extension of my hand, Shlucho shall Adam Kamo. So therefore, if I send you to go do something, please go give that piece of meat to person X. You listen to me because you're my Shliach. And what you did was Me'ila, you're nothing more than an extension to my hand. However, what? Potter. However, lo asa if what the what the Eved did wasn't what I asked him to do, but what he did on his own volition, then shliach ma'al. That's the shliach's problem. You 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 act. You, I didn't ask you to do that. You did that on your own. You gave meat that was that was muktash to the base of mikdash to a person who shouldn't be eating it. It's your, you did something wrong. That's not right. Oh, so says the Gemara, Mantana, who's the author of this Mishnah, that when the Shliach follows the Balabais, then the, ba- then the Me'ila falls on the Balabais. And if the Shliach goes out of bounds and works on his own, then the Me'ila is his. Amar Chizda must nisa, and it must be to look at Rabbi Akiva. Why is it that this Mishnah is not like Rabbi Akiva? Five lines from the bottom, six lines from the bottom, that's not. 
Because the Mishnah says as follows, Ketzad, what is the case that we're talking about uh, in regards to the Shlichus? Omar lo, tain basar le'orchem. Let's say that I'm the Balabais, and I say to my Eved, please go give basar, a piece of pastrami, a piece of corned beef, a piece of steak, give it to the guests. V'nosan lehem kavid. And the Shliach doesn't listen. It's not, they should have liver. Tain kavid, or I, the Balabai, say, you know what? I'd like you to give them liver, and he doesn't listen. V'nosan lehem basar. He brings out a ribeye. Ha-shliach ma. That may, that's clear. clear. That, that makes perfect sense. Because the shliach broke the shlichus. I asked you to do X, you did Y. That's not my fault. I told you to give them an item that wasn't me'ila. You didn't listen. That's your problem, not mine. It is, but we'll see on the next page that my, my language was specific. It means a piece of steak, not the liver. They're not the same. The Rabbi Akiva, if this Mishnah was in fact Rabbi Akiva, a little bit what Tex was saying, Ha'ama Rabbi Akiva, then it should have been according to Rabbi Akiva, who has this broader understanding of the neder, because he says that a replacement item is the same as the original item. So then if that's true, then why in this Mishnah, if the shliach gives COVID instead of basar, why, why, would, why, why is that shliach's issue? That should be the balabais. It should be limo balabais, lo limo shliach. Therefore, by definition, this mission about Shlichus and Me'ila cannot be Rebbe Akiva. The Gemara says on the last line, that's not true. Here's how we could paint the picture so that we can understand Rebbe Akiva accordingly. Last line of Nundal Ramadal. Amar Abaye, Afidu Tema Rebbe Akiva. We could even say that this Mishnah is like Rebbe Akiva, going to the last word on the page. Milo Mode Rebbe Akiva, the Tzarechim Luchei. Even if it's true that Rabbi Akiva agrees to the broader nature that the replacement counts as the original, but the Eved still should have asked, you don't run my house. I run my, I tell this to my kids all the time. You're not in charge. I'm in charge. If I ask you to do something, you do something different, you missed it. If I ask an Eved, please go give them a piece of meat. And on his own, he decides I'm giving them covet. You should have asked. So Rabbi Akiva says, you should have asked, even though you're right, they're in the same genre. The replacement is like the original. But if you don't ask, that's on you. I still agree they're in the same category. You broke the rules of shlichus. You're my shliach. You don't get to choose. You're not a proxy. You have to listen to me. And therefore, the Gemara says that the Mishnah can still be like Rabbi Akiva. And Itmar, this answer of Abaye that we just learned, that you have to ask permission as a shliach in order to get out of the Me'ila situation, Itmar Shmaisa Kame to Rava. This case of Abaye was brought before Rava. A yeah, Abaye's response that we just saw was brought before Rava, Omar Lahon, and he said back to the people saying, they came up to him, they're like, by the way, Rava, did you hear Abaye's answer that really the Mishnah could be like Rabbi Akiva because the Shliach should have asked permission? What does he say back to them? Shapir Omar Nachmeni. Perfect. A little unique what the di di dynamic is here because they're the same generation, Abaye and Rava, where they fought all the time together. And Nachmeni is another name for Abaye because uh, he was raised by a Nachmeni. Okay, fine. So that's what the Gemara says, that this answer is deemed acceptable. And therefore, we don't have Akash and Rabbi Akiva, which is what the Gemara was trying to do. Hey, Rabbi Akiva has to be wrong with his pshat because the case of Shlichos and the Me'ila says the Gemara, not Akash, because of Abaye's approach. Abaye's approach works perfectly fine. <coughs> okay. Man Tana de Polygale de Rabbi Akiva, who is the real counterpart in our Mishnah? We know that the Tanakam and Rabbi Akiva argue. The Rabbi Akiva says the replacement counts like the original. The Tanakama says the replacement doesn't count like the original. Who's the counterpart of Rabbi Akiva? Says the Gemara four lines down in Dalad Amad Beis Rabban Shimon Ben Gamliel. The Tanya, the Brisa writes, Hano Dermin Habasar. This is the Gemara that David was just referencing before we started Shir. If a person makes a neder against eating basar, then Aser Bechol Mine Basar. The usher, he's not allowed to eat any kind of meat, that's for sure. The usher, he's not allowed to eat the feet, uh, the, the head or the feet. Uve kane, the windpipe, uve kaved, the, the uh, liver, uve lev, the heart, uve ofos, and chickens. However, umutter bibasar dagim vichagavim. So here, what do we see? What do we see in regards to everything that's made out of meat that wasn't meat itself? The kaved and the kane, this, this is Rebbe Akiva land. Rabbi Akiva says, broader idea. All the replacement parts count. What doesn't Rabbi Akiva include? Different kinds of animals. You're allowed, if you make a neder against 
eating meat, you can still eat fish and you can still eat grasshoppers. We know, of course, that grasshoppers are kosher. Some people still eat grasshoppers. Others say that we need a misora. We're not sure which, uh, which animals have a misora. This is a big shayla by turkeys. They do turkeys need a misora. There's a big post game nowadays who won't eat turkey because we don't have a misora. They hold it to us to eat turkey. There's a big shayla out of South Africa. They grew these they grew these buffaloes. And this came, it was like 15, 20 years ago, maybe 20 years ago, because I heard about it in Smicha a long time ago. And they they bred this bison that was extremely lean, uh, extremely lean animal. So tasted good, whatever the case may be. And it was a big Shiloh because they bred the animal. They didn't ask Shilas in advance. And we don't have a Masora on that new creation that you just made. So we do have to have a Masora on eating Chagavim. Don't go eating them unless you have a, a vast Shilas. But Lemaisa, according to Rabbi Kiva, you make a neder on Basar. All other animal parts are Usar, except for chickens, which is a different animal. Uh, fish. I'm sorry, he includes Ophos. Yes, he includes Ophos. We'll discuss that later. Uh, except for uh, fish and for Chagavim. So that would be the Rabbi Akiva land. What does Rashbag say? He says, Omer hanoder mina basar. If a person makes a neder, not to eat any meat, aser bechol mine basar, then he's not allowed to eat any steaks. However, u muter berosh uveraglaim uvekone uvekavid uvelevu veofos. All of the things that the Tanakama, who is equivalent to Rabbi Akiva, would have said were aser as secondary replacement items. This sheet in the Tanaim says these things are muter. All you all you said was ribeyes. So you want to go eat the, the, the liver? Go have a good time. You want to go eat the rosh and the raglaim? That's not what you meant. Everybody knows what a steak is. When you order a steak, you should expect the steak. If they bring you something that you didn't order from the store, that doesn't make you happy. Uh, all the more so those things are not included. So this is how we can see that Rabbi Akiva's counterpart was Rabbi Shimon ben Gamliel. The innards of an animal, the pieces that really aren't the steak, that's not basar. You are not a human being. If you ask for a steak and you get all the nasty stuff inside and you're like, yes, waiter, thank you so much for bringing me the expensive dinner that I purchased. It's not the same thing. And the Gemara says, you're not a barinish, you're not a person. Something, something, your wiring's off. That's not steak. It can't be what you meant. The fish is not actually flashic? It's not that it's not flashic. It's that you're not a mensch, you're, you're not a normal person. It's flashic. But it, with a netherland, with a netherland, it can't be what you meant. When, if I say I'm not going to eat meat, what do you think I mean? Kishka? No way. I meant the, I meant the, the corned beef. No, but it says, because I'm not bossa. As it relates to the neder, oh, okay. not that it's not fleshik, it's not not bisari as the, the way that we have it. it, it it's still definitely fleshik. So it'll definitely make you fleshik. Okay, and then the Gemara says, uh, just confirming that last line of Rashbag. This is nearly comedic. This needs to be the name of a store. If people who want to eat meat are going to trade the innards of meat like meat, those people are not people. So if we should open like a vegan store that's called Lav Bar Inish. Everyone, it'll be like the uh, the impossible burgers, lav barinish. That's going to be. The, anyone want to go in? No takers. <laughs> right, there'll be rocket slice and rocket inish. Rocket inish. It's a new a new business model. So the Gemara says that's not normal, and people within Rashbag land don't have any intentions when they say basar for anything other than basar. So machlokas Rabbi Akiva and Rashbag. Halfway down, the Gemara says, I don't understand. What did Rashbag say? We, he, he seemed to have included Oaf. Maishna basar Oaf la Tanakama de Asir in regards to the Tanakama, who is Rabbi Akiva, who said that when I make a neder against basar, I'm not allowed to even eat chicken. De avid shlicha de mimlachu. That means that the person wanted to replace it. Basar dagim nami, avid shlicha. De ilom mishkach bisra mimlachale. I don't understand, says the Gemara. If you're saying that chicken is a replacement, so we would reasonably do the same thing. My wife sends me to go buy chicken cutlets. I mean, we don't eat fish in our house, but assume that we did, a family that does. Uh, Rachie, there's no chicken left. The only thing that's left is salmon. Would you like some salmon? Totally reasonable question. So the Gemara says, if ophos are included as a replacement part, why isn't fish included as a replacement part? <laughs> That's a great question. It also shows us that it was treated in a similar plane back in the day. 
fish and chicken and meat. They were all on a similar plane. The, the Havamina, the question, seems to imply that that was normal for people to eat that way. We know this also from Hilchos Shabbos, that people would eat Kasa de Harsana. There were foods that people would eat all the time on Shabbos. So it's, it's considered a hedor to eat fish at every meal on Shabbos. And some of the posts can write, the modern posts can write, if you don't like fish, that's not a hedor. I don't like fish. Koshi Rav, I went to someone's house and for, for, for a professional business lunch. They invited me for lunch and they didn't ask me any food sensitivities. I didn't think twice about it. The main dish was salmon. I hate fish. So I smothered it in teriyaki sauce and just, uh, I, but tuna fish, I, I tried once, gagged. Can't even eat it. I would just say no. So here I was able to fake it. Filter fish, I can fake with mayonnaise. I can fake it. So I won't have to eat it. But lemaise was considered an, an equal delicacy back in the day. So what is the answer to our question? Rabbi Akiva wants to say all the replacement parts are like the original. And it's included in Rabbi Akiva's sheet uh, that oaf is a replacement for, replacement for basar. Why is oaf a replacement for basar and not fish? Answers the Gemara two-thirds of the way down. I'm Rabbi, kigon shahiki is dumb. Oh, we're talking, it's an ukimta. We're talking about a case where the person in discussion just had a kozastam bloodletting. And of course, we all know Code word for we have no clue what we're talking about. <laughs> that after Akaza's dam, Dulo Achil Dagen. You can't eat fish after bloodletting. Makes sense. Makes sense. Mm -hmm. Says the Gemara, Ihachi, if it's true that we're talking about someone with Akaza's dam, he just did bloodletting and he can't eat fish. Afilu Ofos Nami Lo Achil. He shouldn't be eating chicken either. And back to, we flipped the question the other way. If we're talking about Akaza's dam, then I understand why fish isn't there, but then Of shouldn't be there either. Oh, it's not a replacement part. Domar Shmuel. Dimisukar, when a person does bloodletting, v'achil bisra de tzafra, and he eats the flesh of a bird, parach libe kitzafra. His heart will fly away like a bird. Namely, hakazaz dam. Not only are you not allowed to have fish, you're also not allowed to have birds. So if that's true, kasha again on Rebbe Akiva Shita. The Tanya, not only that, ain makizin, when a person does hakazaz dam, they're not allowed to eat lo al dogim, they're not allowed to eat fish, lo al ofos, no chickens, lo al basar maliach, not unsalted meat. And as well, the Tanya, hikizan lo yocha lo chalav, you can't drink milk, lo gvina, no cheese, lo beitzim, no eggs, lo shachalayim, no kress, lo ofos, lo basar maliach. So you can't, have anything. Can't, you can't, can't eat very much. You can eat basar that's not maliach, which is the only inferred roasting. Yes, sure. a little too seasonal for, uh, sure for the record. It might be very salty. Yeah, it could very well be. I didn't look that up. That's a good point. I didn't even think about it until Michael said something. Shiny ofos. For storage, yeah. The freezers, as it were. Just want to see if the Ron talks about that. Mistabra de Buster Maliach of Hilabiyama da Kaza Asir. Oh, if it doesn't define it. Okay, done. Good question. So says the Gemara, how do we answer up Rabbi Akiva? Shiny Ophos to F de Shlika. Problem solved. If you cook the chicken enough, if you boil it enough, then it's okay to eat on the day of Akaza Stam. And that must be the case Rabbi Akiva was talking about. That's the line in the sand. That's why Rabbi Akiva says that ofos are bichlal, a replacement part for meat, but chick, but uh, but fish is not. Abaye Omar, kigon de kaivin le, this is the answer number two. Abaye says, how do we figure out this whole lukimta of Rabbi Akiva? De kaivin le e naim. We're talking about a case where a person has uh, a headache. Their eyes hurt. That's a code word in the Gemara for a person who has a headache. The dogim kashin le enayim, because fish are bad for your eyes and for your mouth and for your stomach. But the Gemara is only talking about for headaches. People should not eat fish if they have headaches. It says the Gemara, Ihachi, uh, uh, if that's true, then if you're worried about the headaches, then achil dogim, you dafka should eat fish. Why? To Amar Shmuel, nun samech ayin, of course, the flow of the olive base. Nuna samaleinayim. Nuna, which is a fish, is samaleinayim that treats the eyes. Where did you get this whole thing about the dagim kashin leinayim? Says the Gemara, hahu sof uchla. We were talking about a case where we were end at the person's illness. That's what the Mafarish says at the bottom, three lines from the bottom of the page, besof hacholi, and therefore the food is not as effective at that time. And that's the answer to the Gemara. Answer number two. We'll stop right here. Pick up with a fresh Mishnah. This was another day of uh, Rabbi Meir Daf. Uh, where we started and ended with, at the first word on one page and last word on another. We have another one on Nun Hey. Yes, we had one on Nun Vav too. Yep. Three, three in a row. Four in a row. Wishing you all a beautiful night. Nice. Sheep and